Hi everyone, welcome to part four of the template series. And uh, if you've missed any of the series so far, uh, click Crash's head over there and it'll kind of take you to, to where the playlist actually lives. But today we're gonna be looking at sound effects. And um, this is one question, that this was like the whole thing that started the whole template series was like, does anyone have a template for sound effects cutting and stuff like that? And I will break down how I cut sound effects and I'll break down what I do um, and how I have all my tracks laid out and stuff like that. But you'll see a lot of tracks when I first open this up, but it's really, really simple. Just like the channel on a mix console. If you know one channel, you. you you know, you know the rest of them, right? So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, before we get started, if you would like to go ahead and support this channel, consider checking out the link in the description below where we have dozens of sound effects libraries catered for your professional needs. Okay, opening up the SFX folder, again, you will see a lot of different colors, a lot of different tracks, but uh, don't let this fool you. I'm gonna go ahead and hide everything that isn't relevant to this actual template stuff. So let's just go ahead and hide all this stuff and get rid of it. And it looks so much less intimidating when you're only dealing with like, you know, four or five tracks and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and have a look at what's going on. Right off the bat, you'll see that I have the SFX Master, the SFX Marker, and then the SFX VCA. Again, same thing across all my other stuff. Uh, keep it consistent across everything. So let's quickly go ahead and open up the routing. As you can see, we have the SFX Master, which then goes into the Stereo Master, which then goes into my mains. It's pretty straightforward. You'll also notice I have, again, that little ISL2 window. That's where I keep all of my true peak limiters and stuff like that. So that is just where that lives. Moving on down the templates, um, we'll go into the SFX Submaster, which is basically acting like a group for this effect. And I'll kind of explain what's going on on how I cut things in a moment, um, but let's just quickly go over the routing of the master and I'll kind of explain the workflow of how this template works. So the same sends across everything. Um, the SFX submaster goes into the SFX master, which then goes out to my mains. And that's effectively all that's on here. We then have six mono tracks. Most of what's cut in film is mono. And then, you know, you can worldize it with stereo reverbs and stuff like that. But most of what you cut in, in, in there is mono. And then to beef it up, I actually have another uh, four additional stereo tracks. And I color coat um, green and orange. That way I can kind of see the difference between the two without having to read the actual text itself. Makes it super, super quick. But most of what you cut effects wise is mono. And then, of course, down below, I have my reverbs for the SFX. I have the room, the hall, the exterior, the car, the SFX exterior delay, and the SFX interior delay. So let's keep that there uh, the way that is. But how do I actually use this? So if all this stuff is just routed into the submaster, so then what's all the other tracks for? So I'll kind of explain it now that we've kind of broken it out. So if I go ahead and show you guys the entirety of the SFX template. You see that I have a Submaster 1, a Submaster 2, a Submaster 3, all the way to 6. The reason for this being is, is if I want to go ahead and cut, for example, something like a campfire, that campfire will now live on SFX Submaster 1. Now, at the same time something else is going on, let's say, I don't know, um, you want to cut some extra, extra birds. I'm not going to cut that on the same tracks I'm using for the campfire. So let's say if I want to go ahead and pan the campfire, I can do that on the SFX Submaster 1, which is super handy. But if I have extra stuff on this track that isn't the campfire, I lose that ability to pan it around while still maintaining the independence of all the other elements. So birds would then get cut on to SFX Submaster 2. Or if I want to go ahead and cut uh, car buys, I can then go ahead and cut them on SFX Submaster 3. Now that's not to say that each element of your track gets its own submaster. That's not how this works. As a matter of fact, the majority of the actual uh, SFX cutting happens on groups one and groups two. They kind of just checkerboard up and down, back and forth and stuff like that. But for a more complex scene, like a car cut or a car chase, you might actually need more submasters in order to divide the mix out evenly. If I have something like an explosion, for example, I might want to cut the explosion on submaster one, but then all of the, the debris and rubble on SFX Submaster 2. Maybe a helicopter buy on Submaster 3. Just totally depends on how you want to go ahead and divide this up. The other beauty thing about this is because I'm going ahead and actually dedicating six audio tracks to one Submaster, I can now go ahead and do something like I can cut my doors. So I, in order to cut a door, you need a hinge, you need a door handle, and you need a squeak of some kind, or maybe not. But those are the three elements that make up a door. Now, if I go ahead and cut those on three individual tracks, let's just say these three, for example, I now have independent control on SFX Submaster 1 to treat that effect as one track. And because I have a VCA fader, I now have independent volume control over that one track. And on Submaster 1, I can now pan that three track effect on one track. This works so much easier 
uh, when mixing, especially when fine tuning, because when I come over to my mixer window, for example, let me bring my mixer window over here so I can kind of show you what's going on. I'll, I'll just bring up the entirety of the mixer. So if I bring up the mixer and I just go ahead and just hide the dialogue tracks for a quick second so you guys can see what's going on, you'll actually see that there's so many tracks here to mix and it takes up a lot of space on a console and stuff like that. But what if you were to now just be able to mix on VCA faders? So if I come up to my console and I just want to say I want to hide all channels and I just want you to show me the VCA faders. Well, now I have two pages of VCAs on 16 channels. So I have volume control of, of Submaster 1, which I've cut one effect on, Submaster 2, Submaster 3, Submaster 4. I now have independent volume control over all these sound effects. And if I just want to do a quick sound effects mix, I now have Submasters 1 through 6 right here. And then my B, G, A, and B on, on the last two channels. So now I have full control over my mix just with eight faders. Being able to divide things up this way really helps kind of keep things super organized. Now, six isn't what I normally use. I normally use like anywhere between three or maybe even just two, depending on how uh, small the film is or big the film is, or if there's not a lot of effects in it. Uh, I, I might just only use one uh, submaster. But if you need more than six, just duplicate more, add more tracks. It's totally fine. Um, submasters are just that. They're just submasters. They're not something that is um, hard and true and stuff like that. And if I just need to go ahead and do like, for example, a short little tele commercial in Pro Tools, um, I would only just use Submaster 1. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I can go ahead and create multiple tracks. And if I just want to go ahead and just create two different Submasters, and let's say, for example, um, this Telus film right here, I use like mouse clicks and all this other fun stuff. I might only need two or three tracks of actual SFX instead of like 15. That has been uh, the SFX template. Um, it's not as complicated as it seems. Once you find a system that works for you and stuff like that, it's pretty straightforward. So I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the last installment when we talk about Bee Gees.